friends welcome to the course on mechanical vibrations we were discussing the concepts from the free vibrations and the lesson number 7 we are going to solve numericals on to the free vibrations so let us see what are the different types of numerical varieties we are having so in this numerical we have to determine the natural frequency for the system shown in the figure so we are having a spring stiffness as k and to this spring stiffness we are having a simple pendulum attached which is having mass m which is a bob mass and length of the pendulum is l and the distance at which the spring is attached from the pivot point of the simple pendulum the distance is a so as you know we are going to use the d alambert's principle for writing down the equation of motion so in this case the simple pendulum has been displaced by an angular displacement of theta so there will be a inertial force which will not allow this mass to displace so the direction of that torque will be like this so there is a applied torque and there is a resisting torque now the torque magnitude is given by the mass moment of inertia of the bob into theta double dot now there is another force which is mass into mg which will also try to restore the simple pendulum into its equilibrium position so that torque will be the combination of force into the distance now that distance is now so this distance we is the angle is theta on this as l sin theta and now we can write down the total torque as mg l into sin theta so this is a clockwise torque also we are having dot is also a clockwise torque so the signs of both the equations are same and now there will be another torque which will be applied by the spring stiffness k so again a torque is a combination of combination of spring stiffness into the distance so the spring stiffness here will be k into the force will be combination of stiffness into the distance so the distance from here to here is nothing but a theta or a sin theta so the force is k into a into sin theta is the force into the distance for the pivot point is again a so the total torque applied due to the spring becomes k a square sin theta and the direction for this will be again because the force direction will be like this and if you are applying it at the pivot point it will be again clockwise so that's why the sign will be again plus so this becomes k a square sin theta so these are the only torques which are present so the right hand side of the equation becomes zero so you can substitute some of the terms here as we can have i that is mass moment of inertia for a pendulum system as ml square theta double dot for smaller terms we can smaller angles we can treat the sin theta as theta plus k a square theta which is equal to 0 and now we can 
club the common terms so ml square theta double dot plus mgl plus k a square theta which is equal to 0. So, if I are converting this into a linear differential equation, we get it as theta double dot plus mgl plus k a square divided by ml square into theta which is equal to 0. And from this, we can write down the natural frequency as under root of mgl plus k a square upon ml square. The unit for this will be radians per second. So, this is how you can get the natural frequency for a spring pendulum mass system. So, let us see another example which is having again the combination of spring, pendulum and mass system, but it is print arrangement. So, in this case, it is very much needed to understand that when the pendulum is here, the pendulum is here, once the spring, one of the end of the spring is going to get attached here to the pendulum string, there will be a static equilibrium condition to be maintained so that your pendulum remains horizontal and that static equilibrium condition is nothing but it is equal to k into the displacement delta st into the distance a that is the torque, this should be equal to the force due to the gravity into the distance L theta. So, this condition should be maintained. So, now as these forces are included, these forces or torques are included into static equilibrium condition, we need not have to consider these into equation of motion. So, the forces which are included into the static equilibrium condition, forces or torques should not be included into equ equation of motion. So, the forces or torques which are remaining, those only should be considered into the equation of motion. You can understand this in a other term as the forces or torques which are causing the motion should be only considered into the equation of motion. So, now here you can see if you are considering the mass has been displaced by an angular displacement of theta and the length of the pendulum is L and the distance at which the spring stiffness is spring is attached to the pendulum at A which is having spring stiffness magnitude as K. Here the inertial force will be opposite to the direction of motion and the magnitude will be I theta double dot and this spring will not allow this mass to move downwards. So, the force will be k is the stiffness into the displacement is a theta into if you are considering the torque attached here, it will be k a square theta. So, if you are writing down the equation of motion, it becomes i theta double dot which is clockwise. Also, the torque applied due to the spring force, it will be again clockwise. So, k a square theta this is equal to 0. Again we can put the i as ml square theta double dot plus k a square theta which is equal to 0. We can consider this into a linear differential equation. You can have k square upon ml square into theta is equal to 0. And we can get the natural frequency as a by l into under root of k by m which is having unit as radians per second. So, you can see here the natural frequency for a pendulum which is attached to the spring. So, the natural frequency is comprising of a term as under root of k by m which is associated to the spring mass system natural frequency and it has been multiplied due to the spring arrangement at 
a to the pendulum and the length of the pendulum is l. So, by that much times it is going to get multiplied by. So, let us see another example wherein again a spring mass system is attached here. The students can pause the video for some time and they try to solve this to get the natural frequency for the system which is shown in the figure. So, again here you can have a inertial torque which is I theta double dot which is about this pivot point. There will be a force mg into the distance L theta. So, that will be again a torque and there is a spring which will not allow this pendulum to move rightward. So, it is going to have spring force as k a into theta and the torque will be k square theta. So, if I am writing down the equation of motion, it becomes i theta double dot which is clockwise plus then the torque due to the force mg will be again clockwise. So, it is having sign as plus and the magnitude as mg l theta. And the spring force will be again clockwise about this pivot point. It is going to generate a clockwise moment. That is why again it will be plus. So, the magnitude of the torque will be Ka square theta which is equal to 0. So, we can put some of the terms as m l square which is equal to i that is mass moment of inertia. All other terms remains as it is. We can convert this into a linear differential equation by dividing the equation by ml square. And we can get the natural frequency as under root of mgl plus ka square divided by ml square. And the unit for this will be radians per second. So, this is how we can get the natural frequency of the various systems. Likewise, here only we have seen there only one spring and one pendulum. Suppose there are two springs. So, let us solve one more numerical wherein there is a beam, one end of the beam is attached or hinged and the other end is attached to a spring stiffness K2. So, one end of the spring is attached to the lever and other end is attached to the mass. So, at point B and we are having in between at half of the geometrical location another spring which is supporting the lever which is having spring stiffness as K. So, for this if we want to find out the natural frequency again we have to use the equation of omega n is under root of g by delta st. So, for this we need to find out delta st. So, your delta st that is deflection of this mass. So, this is delta st. So, deflection of the mass delta st will be comprising of two deflections. The deflection of spring K2, we are treating it at delta 2. So, so, the total deflection which is happening for the spring K2 will be directly adding into the delta S. But the spring deflection which is attached to the spring K1, which is delta 1, is going to get multiplied by the distance it is going to get multiplied by the distance. So, we are having the distance from the k1 to a as 
small a and the spring stiffness k2 to the point of hinge the distance is b so here this will be b by a so it is going to get multiplied with the factor b by a now we have to find out the forces in the springs so the force in the spring k2 will be directly w and the force in the spring k1 will be again get multiplied by the distance so w into b by a and now if we put these equations put the forces that is we are having deflection as force upon stiffness so we are going to use this so, if we are talking about the value delta 2, it will be the force is W divided by the spring stiffness is K2 plus the distance B by A remains as it is delta 1, delta 1 will be written as the spring force as W into B by A upon the stiffness as k1 so if we are doing the math of it we can get w by k2 plus b square by a square into w by k now we can solve this and we can get w value outside the bracket and inside the bracket we will have 1 by k2 plus b square by a square into 1 by k1. And now we can have this delta st put into the equation of natural frequency as g by delta st. We will we will know only the value of distances a and b and the spring stiffness is k2 and k1 and also the mass attached magnitude should be known. So, with this we can find out the natural frequency of complicated system like this. So, there is another numerical which is shown here which is going to have natural frequency which will be comprising of different components. So, students can take this as the exercise, students can draw this and try to find out natural frequency for this system. Similarly, there is another numerical which has been given as an exercise to be taken at home and complete this to get the natural frequency of the mechanical systems. So, students are also requested to draw this mathematical model and try to get the natural frequency of this system. So, with this we have came to the end of this session, thank you.